that is today on Inside Sources. And I'm delighted to welcome first Mr. Dilly Farotimi. Mr. Farotimi, you are welcome to Inside Sources. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My first question, as always, is if you look at where the country is today, where we are, would you say that we are on course to that great Nigeria that I believe most of us, if not all of us, have dreamt about? I'm going to be 56 years old this year. And in my entire lifetime, we've never been further away from the path to greatness than we are today. The future of Nigeria appears more bleak today than it has ever been in my entire lifetime. I'm a student of history too. And with the possible exception of the period during which Nigeria fought a civil war, which is anything but civil, Nigeria has never been closer to the brink than it is today. So I am not very optimistic about the trajectory of my country. Okay, so I, I would like to you know, deepen that a little bit First of all, by saying, who and what circumstances will, will you hold responsible for that scenario that you have painted? And then later, you know, uh, I hope we get the time to talk about how do we get out of it. But first, you know, uh, who and what circumstances, uh, Mr. Farutimi, do you hold responsible for the scenario you have you've painted? I think the first thing is that there are enough blames to go around. Each and every one of us are to blame to varying degrees. But the most important thing that is responsible for where we are today is the complete breakdown of the rule of law. Nigeria as it is today is not ruled by law. It is ruled by impunity. It is ruled by the will of men and not by any institution or state or by the laws. And we have copious laws on our books, so it's not for the absence of the law is not for an absence of courts, but it is for the absence of the fact that there is simply no rule of law in Nigeria. The first thing that must exist in a space before you can speak to either democracy or citizens is the presence of the rule of law in that space. We are in a country where I cannot expect to get justice in the courts because the courts have no long, are no longer interested in imposing or ensuring the rule of law. That principal loss, more than anything else, is responsible for where we are today. Mm. When you've looked beyond that, you then begin to look at the institutions of states. You look at the police, you look at the custom, you look at the army, you look at the courts. What you find is almost a complete and total failure of each and every one of these institutions to do what it was designed to do. If anything, the laws are observed more in breach, and you find that it is a function of how the person that who is meant to administer laws, but has become an administrator of impunity, feels about licensing the powers of impunity to whoever they care, or exercising the powers of impunity in respect to whoever they equally care. So, in the absence of the rule of law, you have complete putrefaction of each and every one of what should be institutions of state. That is why we are where we are. Mm, interesting. So, so if we just pick one of the issues that you raised, uh, Mr. Farotini, if we pick the issue of impunity. So, so we have a system, and I think this point has been well made, uh, you know, variously. You know, I, I, I think there must be very few people in Nigeria who will compete, you know, that claim of uh, impunity. So I want to ask you, when you have a system that is, you know, that where we have so much impunity, like you have described, how do we break free of that impunity? Or, or, the first so, thing that, Yes, go ahead. Okay. If you recall, when you asked the question originally, I was quick to admit to the fact that we are all to blame. Yes. When okay. I was in the university, we had this him that will sing before we start any student action. We call it a looter back then. Mm. We'll say book boom one on law one bear. Book boom one on law one bear. Be Nigeria T shape by Jay. Book boom one on law one bear. And then we will proceed. 
Will to you say, mention can, the names can, of can you explain leaders. that in English? Translate. Oh, I will. Okay. What it simply means is that they are all guilty. They are all complicit. And then we'll begin to mention the names of those we consider the ruiners of Nigeria, who are mostly the military head of states and their civilian collaborators, because I went to university in the days of the military. However, in this age and time, the reality is that we are all to blame. There is no strata of the Nigerian society that is not complicit in the mess in which we have found ourselves, from the churches to the mosques to the professionals, from mechanics to carpenters to teachers to journalists. Each and every one of the strata of society has become complicit in the mess that we have found ourselves in. And if we are to ever come out of this, we must, as a matter of necessity, make individual commitments to change for the better. It's not just about replacing the persons who sit in the offices of government. We, in our private spaces, have to come to the knowledge of the fact that you cannot build anything enduring on the back of the lies that we have told ourselves. We have built a country effectively on lies. The pastors tell lies from their pulpit. The imams tell lies from their pulpit. Nobody speaks truth to power because they are all looking to benefit from the system. So if you say that, what could we possibly do to change our lot? I am saying to you clearly that each and every one of us have to make a commitment to change where we are and who we are. Well, well I mean, quite... Uh quite compelling uh, 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 submission, Mr. Farrell Timmy. In, in, in 2015, 2014, 2015, there was a huge grants well in this country, you know, that produced, I mean, w w which was uh, uh, denominated by the chain matra. And you could see that there was a grants well of opinion in the direction of change. Nigerians expected change. Now, I don't think that change has happened, and that's a long story. But this is my question. Do you think the fact that today we have as president somebody who had always been an active participant in the quest for good governance, even better governance, somebody who has uh, uh, been a pro-democracy activist even before he became uh, uh, governor, and somebody who uh, gives us the record, and we know of some of the things that happened in Lagos, you know, fairly uh, 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 useful. Do you think that he, he can turn around the situation that this country is in today? I must ask you that question, Mr. Farrell is, is there any chance at all that if we are going to live by what he says, we can begin to turn the direction in, 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 in a good or a better uh, trajectory? Mr. Fautini. You know, uh, one of the things that we have been very successful at doing is um, for our false narratives. Mm. We have created compelling lies that we have deluded ourselves into accepting as truth. One of them is where you started your question the lies of 2014, 2015. I remember, not everybody bought into those lies. I remember very clearly that the essay that titled my first book, Do Not Die in Their War, published by Guardian on the 7th of February, 2015, before the election, I said very clearly that there is an illusion of change being marketed and that all you actually need to do to realize that it is delusional to believe in this lie is to look at the eye table whenever they are talking about the APC. That each and every one of the persons sat on the eye table is directly responsible for where we were as at that time. Nothing has changed between 2015 and today. Let's be clear about something. You said that the man had done some things in Lagos that should suggest to us that perhaps we'll see some changes in Nigeria. I put it to you, sir. Lagos is the fifth largest economy in Africa, I'm being told by multiple economists. What is it about the services and infrastructure in Lagos is suggestive of it being the fifth best in Africa? Is it the healthcare delivery system? 
The man built Lagos, quote and unquote, but he hasn't built a single healthcare facility in Lagos in 20 something years that is capable of treating his own many ailments. That is one. In Lagos State, for every government classroom, for every classroom built by the Lagos State government, and I'm not talking about those built in the last 20 something years, I'm talking about those that have been built from the inception till date. For everyone, there are at least four private classrooms. That is telling you the total failure of the educational system in Lagos State is completely, almost completely privatized. The ones that are in existence are so degraded that nobody who can afford it will send their children to those schools. That is what had been built in the last 25 years. When you now begin to look at the road infrastructure in Lagos State, my neighborhood, the Lekki Ekpe Axis, They've been building the single road in and out of my neighborhood for over 16 years. It's not been completed. It's a nightmare to travel that road. That is, those are the examples you have to look at when you begin to look at what he might be able to do at the federal level. The finances of Lagos State remains one of the most opaque in Nigeria. What is happening is that in the midst of the rot that Nigeria has become, we've been pointing to the lies and propaganda being told of a Lagos that has been built mm. and that will be replicated at the federal level. They will point at, they will point at some moribund rail lines. Let's talk about that. 16 or 17 years, at God knows how much inflated cost, they built the blue line. They're talking about a red line now. Question is how much of that red line actually belongs to the federal government. How much of it was built by Lagos State government? At what cost? Fact of the matter is that if we actually look to the evidences of our highs and we look to what we see within the state that the man has superintended for over 20 years in one form or the other, whether as governor or as godfather, reality is that it should tell us that we should expect nothing in Nigeria. And the evidence of the last nine months are unimpeachable and cannot be denied. I know that the convenient excuse is always that Buhari had damaged it and is repairing it. But who brought Buhari? Who was the chief marketer of Buhari in 2014, 2015 when the change lie was sold to Nigerians? The fact of the matter is that until we all come to the knowledge of the fact that nobody is coming to save us but we ourselves, Nothing is going to change. And there is nothing that has been done by this man to suggest that we should expect anything positive. In fact, we should brace ourselves for more to come. Wow. Well, I mean, Mr. Fawzi, you know, quite uh, a, a very compelling uh, argument that you put forward there. And I hope as to the questions that you have put out regarding the red ray and the blue ray, that we'll be able to get a little bit more clarity about it. One last question uh, before you go, Mr. Farotini. So... Do you subscribe to any kind of political reforms, you know, that might help the people to get out of what uh, is clearly, uh, uh, you know, something that is uh, not what the wide, you know, based on your uh, description? Let me, yeah. Let, let, let me tell you this. You can speak to political reforms in a society governed by law and that is rule-based. But this is not that society. What has happened is that with the ascension to office of the man known as Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a, an INEC that advertised beavers, transmission of election results from the polling unit level, unilaterally turned around and talked about glitches. And the courts decided to be legalistic in the interpretation of clear provisions of the Electoral Act. So today, what the courts have said is that the, the, the INEC does not have to transmit results electronically. So we are back in a situation where someone like Wike is appointing his person as an INEC commissioner. So we are in a situation where whatever INEC says is the result is the result. And if you are now saying that we should look to, to we should look to reforms, question is who is to reform our situation? Can we depend on beneficiaries of electoral highs to then reform themselves out of power? It is next to impossible. I have spent my time since after the election 
seeking to educate the Nigerian people to understand that they are the only ones who can rescue themselves from this mess. Nigeria is already added almost inexorably towards a catastrophe. But the reality is that if the people are not carefully educated to understand that they are not each other's enemies, that the real enemies of the people are those who have ruined this country and placed us where we are, we will end up in an implosion. I fear that. I run away from that and I seek to educate the people to understand that Chinedu, Ngozi, Wasiu, Kule, uh, Nodu, or Aminu, those are not the enemies. The enemies are the beneficiaries of this system. This system has to end one way or the other before Nigeria can be rescued. The beneficiaries of this system, both within and outside Nigeria, are taking too much pleasure and they have no deterrence. They have nothing to gain from reforming it. They've successfully weaponized ignorance and poverty against the people and they are, not in they are so hard-headed, they cannot even see what is in their own enlightened selfish interest and they believe that they can sustain this evil reign. But I know his human history has told me that this is not sustainable. My worry is that we don't end up in a cataclysmic situation. That is my sole worry. But to expect any change or self-reform from this system is delusional. It's not going to happen. Thank you. Th th thank you so much, uh, Mr. Farutimi. And uh, Thank you very much I for really appreciate me. Your, your time and your comments. Uh, your comments will make me intensify my prayers as a pastor and make me intensify my work as a journalist because we must have a great Nigeria in our time. Thank you so much. Uh, inside Sources. <laughs>